Hello, I wanted to talk to you today about the realities of uh, renting out an HMO, that's a house in multiple occupations. So if you don't know what that is, um, you take a pretty normal looking house, usually a, a three or a four bedroom house, and by utilizing some of the living space and turning that into a bedroom, you can end up with a five or six bedroom house in multiple occupation by renting out each of the rooms separately. Um, so, I've just finished a blog and uh, I've just finished editing it. So I'm, I'm holding a piece of paper because I'm old fashioned. I do my editing on a piece of paper and then it gets uploaded for me to the website. But this will be on the website in, in a short while. Um, there'll be a link. This is a video on YouTube, of course. So there'll be a link and wherever else it gets published, there'll be a link to the to the website. So you get the full, there's a lot to read. I'm not going to go through it um, all. You know, that, 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 that would... would uh, uh, negate the, uh, the the reason for re uh, writing a, uh, a blog, hey? Um, but everything I put in here is it's advice, it's thoughts, and um, then I wanted to sort of record a video to camera just highlighting what I think. Um, yeah, we've, got, we've got a lot of experience in HMOs, you know. Do you know what? I think I'll, I'll, I'll change the title from multiple occupancy versus single lets. let's let's change that so it's, it's comparing the two things yes yeah? so let's change the title to multi hmos versus single lets. you know what what what's the difference between the two because really what i'm driving at is and we see landlords they come and say they want to know which one they should choose and um you know in here it's the the pros and the cons and i'm highlighting that but there's more than that it's like which one should you choose um if you want to carry on this conversation if you go to our video description well, first of all, you can write a comment on YouTube if you want, but there's a link in the video description. You can book on a discovery call, and that's really the, the two-way call. I, I host co-host the uh, discovery call, so we do them a couple of times a month. It's a Zoom call. You book on, small group of landlords, and you get to ask questions. So if you want to talk about HMOs more, that's the forum. Book on. We can talk about them. In those kind of calls, landlords are they're basically driving out. Okay, tell us a bit about HMOs and single lets. We talk about both. But what do you think I should be buying? We've got the experience. We, we've got oh, over 100 HMOs, over you know, sort of five, 600 rooms under management right now. I own HMOs, have done for a, for a long time now. Um, and yeah, we, 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 know, we know a thing or two, I guess. Um, there's the financial side, you know, they cost more money in. Yeah, the capital left in will be more. Um, the return will be higher if you do it right. There's the management side, you know, all the extra legislation. Um, there's a lot more legislation, lots, lots, lots more nuts and bolts to go into the renovation to start off with. That's why it costs more. You know, all the the, uh, the smoke stuff, the fire stuff, the bigger kitchen, the, the furniture. You know, lots more furniture, for beds, all that kind of stuff. That's why it costs more. That's why the, the capital left in is more, um, and all those nuts and bolts. But then running the thing takes more, you know, doing the cleaning road term. Cleaning is not just a, oh, it's nice to be clean. You, you won't run it out if it's not clean, but equally you, you won't meet your um, management ob obligations when you get inspected and it's dirty, then that's a health hazard. Um, if the hooks over the top of the fire door, that happens often, you know, people have got those sort of um, coat hangery things that extend you know, five hooks on the back of a door and stops the fire door closing, you'll fail your fire exit inspection. The intermittent slit strips need checking. You might as well do that as all part of the cleaning. That's what, that's what I'm saying. We, 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 we put that all together. So um, you know, how are they to manage on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis? And how does that drop down and filter down into the profits? So I've got a bit of that in there, but a discovery call is the place to, uh, to um, really discuss that in a two-way conversation. Uh, roughly speaking, we like to think that one HMO equals about three single lets, the kind of single lets that we buy. There are certain types of single lets when you buy them, you look at it and think, I'd rather buy those than you know, two HMOs, or I'd rather buy three HMOs. It's always good to have both in front of you to be able to make the choice. Different clients will make different choices depending on where they want to get to, how long they've got to get there. There's a lot of variables. It's not a simple, uh, simple question. So do book on a discovery call and get your, your questions answered. Um, yeah, I'll stick that up there now. And um, I think the, the final thing I'm going to leave you with, because it's a question we get asked a lot, it's about the hassle factor. Yeah, all well and good. It's quite hard. It's not apples with apples sometimes. It's apples and pears. So once you've separated all that out, you've chosen this because of that 
one of the, oh, I didn't mention one of the things is I, I think everybody needs to be prepared to put an HMO in there. As you become a portfolio landlord, the stress test on your mortgage uh, rates is going to become more and more of a factor. And putting an HMO in there juices the whole thing up and maybe allows you to either refinance more or buy more single lets if you want to. So sometimes you, you single let, single let, single let. I need to buy an HMO just to juice the numbers so that I can continue buying single lets. So you need to pre you need to know this. Be prepared to buy an HMO, and I think lots of landlords will have to start feeding that in. Uh, maybe when interest rates rise and those kind of things. Um, but you 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 also need to have the information to decide when and where. However, coming back to my, 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 my other point, the final point, once you've decided whether you want to do it or, what, or not, the thing that holds lots of landlords back is this idea is going to be a load of hassle. And um, yeah, you're tempted, you can see the rationale, you might even decide, yep, I want an HMO. And you look at the list and you think, am I really going to let myself in for all of that heartache and pain? And there are some really simple there are, there are lots of them, but there are really simple rules and things you need to know. A check sheet. Let's call it a check sheet. In fact, actually, I think we call it a check sheet um, in, in our business. Uh, of things you need to get right in order to make the management of an HMO as easy, frictionless, painless um, as possible. So it doesn't suck up all your time. So that the promise of that extra full fat um, you know, profitability really does drop to the bottom line. It doesn't get eaten up in the middle by stuff that's costing you time and money and hassle. You know, So the answer and categorically, oh, I can't tell you we're all in the next uh, 30 seconds on a YouTube video, but you can make an HMO really easy and smooth to run. It's more work than a single let, of course it is. But like I say, one HMO might equal three single lets and it's probably easier than managing three single lets. There's more to organize. There's things you can do wrong. There's things that you can go down a path and you, know, you can get involved in doing these things and it takes up your time. Whereas actually, if you delegate it out, you'll end up being cheaper and you know, just get done and just get a little report saying it's been done. You know, all, all sorts of examples like that. You know, um, yeah, I've seen landlords, you know, I'll, I'll go around and check the fire test every time. Well, why don't you just ask your cleaners to do it? Yeah, or oh, they can't. Well, you can if you train them, for example, things like that. So we only use cleaners that are trained to do the fire tests they don't charge any extra to do the fire test. They just press a button, does it work? Yes. Then they've got to record it and whatever, and they, then they carry on with the cleaning, which they were going to do anyway. Whereas I've had landlords come to us, oh, that's a clever idea. At the moment, I've got a cleaner and I test it. So I have to be there once a week or once every two weeks or whatever the, the, the schedule is on that particular house. Simple stuff like that. But there are dozens and dozens of little shortcuts that can really make a difference to a landlord's life with an HMO. So hopefully um, you can uh, you know, link link onto the uh, the blog. Hope you enjoy it. Um, there's lots of sort of detailed pros and cons, those kind of information there. But hopefully this was a bit more of a, a, a conversation or a starter of a conversation. If you want to have a two-way conversation, bring us some questions. Click onto a uh, click onto the link and book onto a discovery call. I should be there. Hopefully, I'll see some of you at some point. Bye for now.